Hello and welcome everybody and thank you guys for joining me again. My name is Wilkie and I'm here with another, uh, yeah, Lost Ark video today. First of all, um, I'm finally back on track. I'm 95% recovered, so I'm feeling better. I feel like I can talk without coughing and sneezing the entire time. So video making and streaming schedule will end soon. Outside of that, I do apologize for making this video so late because this update has been launched on the t uh, 7th of September. Currently it's the 13th. By the time this video is going to go live, it's probably going to be the 14th. So I'm a little bit late here. I still wanted to make this video and as such, I will not cover the entire article here. We we'll just give you a few key points here and uh, pointers and what I think about this update. So this is the first September team update or the first uh, team update that they have promised to give us. So this is probably what we we'll receive in September and probably nothing else we're going to receive because Amazon has their hands full with the different projects. But at least I suspect that this is the only Intel that we'll receive in September. So they're talking about... Um, a few things here and there and like they, they have four key points the first one being localization and th this is something that rubbed me a little bit wrong because they're 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 crunching on numbers which to the untrained eye may seem like a lot but let me tell you this much i worked with localizers and translators in the past i did a very little of localization work myself I don't really do that anymore, but I have worked and I still work with people that do that. And most of the time it's either freelance workers or they're basically hiring people for specific localizations, which they probably did the same here for Lost Ark. And on a good day, if the data they have to localize is relatively well presented, a good localizer can translate eight to 10,000 words every day in a moderate pace even more and obviously it depends a lot of stuff as in um, how good is the data presented how complex is the wording and stuff like that but they're like they're, they're saying stuff like here nearly three million words of english text and still growing obviously it's not going to be just five words that they have to localize and obviously there's a voiceover that they have to be doing and i think voiceover is actually a lot more work than translation translating is um, not to downplay because I think translating is a pretty pretty tough job in localizing um, but you know just re-recording and everything is just much more severe and difficult than um, actually doing the localization work I do think though that they're, they're they're going a little bit extreme here when they're telling us that because essentially I, I read it that way they're they're telling us what they're doing which means if they if they started localization now, they're fairly late to the party. Also, this is also one of the things that why the game has been delayed is because of localization. Yeah, that rubs me a bit the wrong way, to be honest, because this is definitely something that could have been alongside a long time ago. Because internally, they knew a lot longer that Amazon or that Lost Ark is going to be in the West. Why not do it before? It's not like the translation is gonna go bad or it's gonna rot because it hasn't been used for half a year. So, anyways, though, um, I'm a little bit mixed on the localization part. That's that's all I'm saying here. Not saying that this is little work, and there's definitely some manpower that has to be put in there. I think the way they word this, they're they're making it sound as just like such a huge thing that uh, takes so much time, which shouldn't infrastructure now for me this is pretty much the the most important part and th th they kind of make it they, they kind of punch into the same thing which um like obviously amazon is a very big company and they have infrastructure in a lot of places in the world what they don't have is the experience to handle data centers data centers when it comes to gaming they have no successful game ever so far and uh, looking at New World, for example, their servers died in a fire very, very often. Like, their, their servers had a lot of issues. I do really hope that um, they're, they're trying to improve and make it better for Lost Ark. In my, in my honest opinion, I really, what I w really would wish is lag less. Which is kind of like 
never to be achieved to be honest but lag free or as little lag as possible introduced especially for pvp servers maybe even separate servers for that regard um consistent data streams and as little downtime as possible and they even said themselves between game servers backend services databases over 60 different systems are needed in each data center so, so there's a lot of work that they gotta do it's not just as firing up their one of their vms in any of their data centers and suddenly everything is going to populate itself so there's a lot of work they need a lot of uh, specialists to do this they need a lot of tech savvy people to do this which i do think they have and i do also think they have the funds to pay those people the question is though are they going to do it i i personally think or hope so but um yeah i, I think this is by far probably the hardest work for them to be honest though we have to see how it plays out. At least the beta worked fairly well. Let's see how it turns out in uh, November. Now, testing, uh, being, or started at being a software tester myself. Not really anymore. Like, I stopped software testing quite a while, well, a couple of years ago. Um, but I did actually test for, for a bit amount of softwares. So, what, what kind of irks me about those numbers is, um, so it, collaborating with Smilegate, our QA team has tested over 30 game builds on that time. The team has also verified more than 440 fixed bugs. So have they verified that the bugs that they tested in those 30 full game builds have been fixed? Or have they verified that those bugs no longer exist? I might be I might be on a limp here and I might be too technical in this terminology here. I can't really relate to that number as in first of all I don't know how many people are working on that and second of all I don't really know if they fixed them if they told Smilegit that there are bugs and they fixed them or maybe it was like a joint effort so this may sound a lot this may be as little as having little audio issues having a visual bug maybe sometimes in the logic structure um, th th there's like bugs can surface in so many different shapes and forms from uh, little funny things quite literally to like visual bugs um, audible things maybe overrides in terms of voice lines stuff like that all the way to logical bugs where you couldn't talk to an NPC for example or where your inventory wouldn't work very well so we don't really know what that number entails and what kind of severe or how kind of severe the bugs were i think it's a good number that they that they tell us i think it's just as useless as like they could have they could have just said we fixed a couple hundred bugs we fixed a lot of bugs like <laughs> this is a massive multi-million line code game there's obviously gonna be a lot of bugs and they will continue fixing bugs but I had to smile though because squashing box is dirty work. I don't think squashing box is dirty work. I think squashing box is hard work. But I also think it's a very fantastic work and I think it's a very satisfying work because it teaches you to rethink and also like very often in time, at least for myself, when I look at code and I can't figure it out, um, sometimes it's more about just, you know, taking a step back, letting it sit, looking at it the other day and just asking like colleagues like, look, I did this and this and this and this and this and that. It should work, but it doesn't. And when you finally fix it, I think it's a very satisfying feeling. But uh, that's just me working in the IT, though. Outside of that, uh, the striker class, all that uh, practice looking for Makoko states has paid off. Um, they even mention it as some adept eyes spotted the striker version of the platinum avatar. So they now have confirmed once again that striker is gonna be the last class. Like, th there's a bit of a controversy going on with in regards to that this may have been accidental, this may have not been accidental. Like, I don't think it was accidental. Like, like how can he? How can he do this? How can he not do this on purpose? So, I'm I'm a bit weirded out by the thought that this has not been done on purpose. But who knows? But yeah, we have some uh, actual official, if you will, proof 
Red Striker is going to be the last class that we'll be playing in the beta and at launch. So, uh, sad news to Landsmaster or Glade year players like myself. Striker it is. But I'm definitely going to be trying it out. Anyways, this is all for for the September update. Like I said, it didn't really have a whole lot of substance. So I didn't really want to go too into detail. As usual, link is going to be in the description below. I do hope that the next update is going to be a bit more fruitful. Because I personally think that this update was... Uh, yeah. They, they could have given us some more. Honestly. Nonetheless, they kept to the word. And I do hope that they will continue to do so last but not least if you want to see me live then i do stream on mondays usually and some other days as well especially now that i'm back on track so those streams will be announced on twitter discord videos like these so feel free to check out any of the social media below outside of that i do hope this was somewhat um yeah it was really entertaining was it but informational outside of that i do stay i do want you to guys stay safe and i'll see you guys Next time.